Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Coffee Tip Wednesday where my goal is to help you create cafe quality coffee at home. Today we're talking all about grinding. Grind size and particle distribution, uh, the best tips for grinding. All right, everybody, so today we're talking all about grinding and the importance of different particle size and the impact that, that has on coffee. So as we have kind of mentioned in these videos before, with most coffees, I should say all coffees, really not most, but they get, the consistency of a roasted coffee is that wood. So imagine running wood through a wood chipper. When that wood comes out, it's all sorts of different sizes. And we get really, really fine particles of wood kind of like what we would get here in uh, this espresso grind where it's almost like sand a really fine sand and those are called fines now uh, this actually the actual grind of an espresso isn't necessarily small enough to be considered a fine from start to finish it's still large enough to be considered a grind particle the fines are really 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 small um, with the fines you will notice that if you're brewing a cup of coffee and you get a lot of fines building up in your filter brew you'll notice that it gets kind of like muddy around the edges and can actually slow down the flow rate of your coffee in that filter. Um, if you've ever tried to brew a Chemex and your coffee is ground too fine, you'll get a lot of fines build up, built up on the side of that filter and it takes forever for that Chemex to actually brew your coffee because the paper is so thick. And so it, you essentially have to scrap it and throw it away because it will take 20 minutes to brew a cup of coffee. On the other opposite side of that, we get things what we call our boulders. And these are really large particle sizes. And these are particles that sometimes even in a French press might seem too big. So if you're doing a full immersion brew like a French press, sometimes you'll grind thicker. Um, but that's another video we can talk about why you might actually want to grind a little bit thinner or smaller. But those are boulders. So on the opposite ends of the spectrum, we have boulders and then we have fines. So the smaller that you grind coffee, like in this espresso grind that we just ground here, the, you have essentially more surface area for the water to come into contact with, less the, which then means the fewer, the least amount of time you need, or you don't need as much time to actually brew the coffee. So if we think about espresso, we grind it really, really tight because we wanna brew essentially an entire 18 to 20 grams worth of coffee in 30 seconds or less sometimes, or maybe more. Didn't mean the espresso, I guess, but generally around 30 seconds. So where if we're making a filter coffee with the same 18 to 20 grams of coffee, it may take two and a half minutes uh, to brew a full cup. So if you can think about that, we're actually, we're cutting that time down by like a fifth or a sixth, whatever the math is in that two and a half times divided by 30, four or five, yeah, so a fifth of the time. So really, by decreasing, by increasing our grind tightness and making the grind really small, we're decreasing the amount of time that we actually have to grind the coffee. And then the vice versa is true. So if you're brewing, say, a French press, you can go a little larger to help reduce the amount of fines, but then you need to increase your brew time. And so if we're doing like a French press, we can brew it, let it sit for six to seven minutes and really let the water absorb all the way into that coffee because now we don't have as much surface area compared to the mass of the coffee. So when it comes to grinding, what we need to think about as we're brewing our coffee, the tighter that we grind or the smaller we grind our coffee, we don't need as much time with the water in contact with the coffee. And then the opposite is true. So for, to get a good full extraction, the bigger our grind is, the more time we need that water in contact with the coffee to actually brew and get to that roughly 20% golden extraction rate. So let's talk about ways that we can get a more even grind. So if we can, the goal with most grinders like this flat burr grinder or even this conical burr grinder is that the better our grind is, the more even our particle distribution will be. So that means the, the least amount of difference from the largest size grinds to the smallest. And then that means that say we're brewing uh, 20 grams and we're doing a filter coffee, in that two and a half minutes, we get even amount of extraction across all the coffee rather 
then you know we're over extracting the fines and under extracting the boulders and so we're getting this really weird mix of over extractive flavors with really under extractive flavors so we want to even out that extraction process across all roughly 20 grams of coffee that we're dealing with so one way that we can achieve a more even grind is by having sharper burrs on our grinder um, but let's back that up you should start with either a conical burr grinder so you want a burr grinder or if you really want to step it up you can get like a flat burr grinder like this forte is or something like a flat burr like the Malconigs have like an ek-43 or some of those really fancy cafe style grinders but again you can pick up this forte grinder um, which is probably, this grinder is probably more than most people's espresso machines. But again, if you don't have a good grind, you're not gonna be able to pull a good shot of espresso. Um, so it all starts with a grind. So if you're going to budget for, uh, you're just starting to get into coffee, 75% of your budget should go to your grinder. Make sure you have a good quality grinder because that will just completely change the quality of your coffee. So always start with a grind there. Um, so yeah, so make sure your burrs are sharp. Um, I am actually guilty of this. I know that I need to replace the burrs in this grinder really bad. It has been probably a year and a half or two years since I've replaced them and I know that they are dull and I've kind of seen that in my extractions and my brewing and I kind of had to manipulate and really tightening up my grind all the way to get a good espresso grind. So again, sharp burrs is the first one. Uh, if we have longer burr grinding paths, so with a conical burr grinder, right, where it's a smaller space, but we're lengthening that burr path. And so now if we can do the same thing with a flat burr grinder, we, we increase that path even more. Um, the nice thing is also with a flat burr grinder, we have less heat generation. So the cooler we can make those burrs, uh, you'll see you can get like ceramic, uh, conical, uh, a conical burr that's ceramic because the ceramic doesn't get as hot as uh, steel or metal or aluminum that they're using in these. Maybe it's probably stainless steel. Uh, so the same thing would be here. So if you get like a ceramic burr, conical burr grinder, you'll have reduced heat. And if it's a bigger uh, burr as a whole, you'll really get a good, nice, even grind there. And then uh, you can also get really fancy with it with multiple grinding stages. So an initial grind and then it kind of gets tighter as it goes down. Similar concept with the uh, conical burr is it drops in, it starts to grind them up top and they slowly get tighter as they feed into that space in the grinder, which is, I think, why conical is probably most popular. However, we're kind of achieving, we can achieve the same things with a flat burr and with the heat distribution and some other benefits with a flat burr grinder, it's kind of the way to go. So again, to kind of wrap this up, um, really our goal with grinding is to try to get as even as a grind across all 18 to 20 grams of coffee that we're brewing with to get the best extraction rate across all the coffee, which is really going to increase our the coffee that we're making it's just going to increase the flavor it's going to make it a lot better so if there's one thing i can tell you if you're going to get into coffee spend all your money on a grinder first and then look at the other pieces of equipment because it all starts with the grind if we can really get it just a, an amazing grind a super even grind the, the rest will kind of fall into place so if you like this um, again please hit the little subscribe button hit the little notification bell so you always get notified of every a new video that comes out please leave a comment below if there's things that you if you have questions or things that you other coffee things that you'd like me to address in these coffee tip wednesdays and as always coffee pedal repeat